What's up party people, G5 Productions in the place to be, Superman first class in the mix. Today I'm gonna be showing you guys what's inside my DJ case and how I set it all up. Let's get it. Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. I'm Gerald with G5 Productions. Excited to share with you guys once again. Um, I wish you all good success out there. And uh, before I get into my content, please go ahead and smash that like button. Subscribe to our channel to help us grow. And if you wanna keep up with the videos that we're putting out, all you gotta do is rock that bell. So check it out everybody. I get lots of questions from lots of DJs and this particular question prompted this video from another local DJ who rocks with a soft case. Now there are pros and cons to both, right? You guys know there's weight comparisons, size comparisons, protection you gotta consider. And then of course there's the convenience of the setup and the teardown in comparison to the two. So only thing I'm gonna really talk about in this video is how I set this up. And also I got a couple of things in my Moss Black Pack that goes along with the setup. There's a video already out for it that I made, so I'm gonna put it down in the link below. All you gotta do is check that out later on when you get some time. This particular case is housing the DDJ SX2, and I think it's also built to size for the uh, DDJ SX3. Let me go ahead and uh, open everything up and get set. Okay, party people, so as a part of the video, these items here is usually housed in my Moss Black Pack. Again, the link to that video is in the description below. So I have the MacBook Pro, an iPad mini, the Shure QLXD microphone, and I literally store it in the bag, usually with one antenna disconnected like that, because that's how it works. Got a hyperdrive here, and of course a USB-A to USB-C dongle here. So I'm gonna talk about why I have both uh, in a minute, but let's go ahead now and focus on the DDJ case and what's in the back of it. So the first thing I wanna start with is what's connected to the actual DJ controller, and then I'll talk about what's connected uh, into the power strip, right? So in the DJ controller, I have the power brick that plugs into it to power it, and it's right here on the power strip. I have a USB cable that comes out of it here, and the other end of it for Serato winds up here on the desktop. We have one microphone cable in here, so this is a custom size that goes right into the back of the QLXD receiver. Moving along on the DDJ, I have an aux cable. So that is what audio goes to from the iPhone or the um, iPad, depending on how I wanna play music. And then I have a left and right XLR speaker out. Now they actually go through and come out of the front of the case, but the power strip, in a nutshell, I have the power brick for the DDJ. I have the power for the uh, Shure QLXD, so the power brick for the uh, microphone unit is rested under here, Velcroed in place. And then I have the power right here that is always available on the desktop for the microphone unit. Then I have the uh, power for the MacBook Pro, so it's coiled underneath and just nicely tucked under there. Here's the power brick for it. I got this Velcro around it just to help keep it in place on the floor and up against the back wall. But the power for the MacBook, um, winds up here. Now it did originally come with a white uh, USB-C cable, but I decided to get a black one just to help things blend in a little bit more here on top because I already got this lightning cable here that I may also replace later. But uh, moving along, here's power for the phone. This also powers the iPad, so I just use it interchangeably. Sometimes I charge my phone with it so it works out and of course I just velcro these in place so they can stay put because these are a lot longer than right here so other than that this concludes the back side of it now I'm going to show you guys how I set up the microphone and the iPad and then of course the laptop let's go ahead and switch it up I'm going to start with the microphone then the laptop then the iPad so with the microphone before I hook up the other antenna I have this uh, safety loop here for the power cable. So one of the first things I do there is I conveniently just loop it through and lock it in place. Now, I'm not fearful that this microphone is gonna go somewhere. This is really just out of habit. So if for some reason something were to tug, at least the power cable is still secure right there. So now that I've taken care of that, I can then go ahead and just screw on the uh, other antenna, just a simple BNC and that's it. And of course you guys know to 45 those out. And then here's the audio cable for the mic. So it's really just that simple. The only thing left to do with this unit is to scan it and then sync the microphone to it and uh, turn up the volume on the DDJ. 
Now, as far as the MacBook goes, um, on the side of it, there are two USB-C ports, but what I did learn, uh, you could actually power the Mac, the newer MacBooks through any of these ports. So rather than be stuck with a bunch of USB-C ports, I've invested in the hyperdrive. And as you can see here, it gives me two USB-C ports here. You have to power it through this one though. That's just the way this uh, device works. Um, the other one you can hook in whatever. And then of course I have a SD slot, a micro SD slot. And of course, down on this end, I have two USB 3.0 slots. So this is where I hook Serato up to our thumb drive or whatever, right? So let's go ahead and set that up. And it's just as simple as taking these two USB-C ports right here and hooking it right into the side of the MacBook, right? But other than that, um, I have power for the MacBook. So it goes in the hyperdrive there. There's always Serato uh, USB cable that need to be hooked up. So I usually put it to the one in the far back just in case uh, I need to hook a hard drive or a thumb drive in here. I can get the cable in there a little bit more conveniently, right? And so other than that, I think I usually just push all the excess cables down in there before I push the tray back. Now the uh, case for the hyperdrive for me, I usually just put it right here so it's uh, near me when I need to pack up and it also helps keep the laptop kind of in place because I usually do space this out a little bit like that, right? So there it is with that. Now, if for some reason the hyperdrive were to fail, then as a fail safe, I do have the USB 3.0 dongle to uh, USB-C right here. Now, as far as the iPad over here, basically, so it's alive, I just um, power it. And of course, this is an iPad mini three. So that's how the power is set up. Sometimes I actually reroute these powers onto the desktop, but in this case, for the video's sake, I'm just gonna uh, leave it up here for you guys. And then uh, after that, everything is uh, pushed out. So here we go. Now I do have plenty of cable slack. I never have that issue of, you know, is something gonna get jammed up or caught up. And then of course, there's always that, you know, little bit of cable management, cleaning things up tucking it down underneath or whatever works, right? So, and that's only if you're into that. Not everybody is, but I am, right? So there's my desktop setup. Okay, everybody, so I want you to use your imagination a little bit. I got a video out about what's in this bag right here, but basically it is a DMX controller slash power strip unit is turned sideways like this. And all I do here in this case is I take the front case off and uh, push it under there, it just fits. And then uh, here's the power for uh, the power strip that's inside the DJ case. And here are the two leads that come from the left and right out. So if I'm using subwoofers, I usually get two six foot cables and just go into the subwoofers. And from there I have other cable packs that I use to build up the sub and the tops together. Um, other than that, if I'm using speakers on just stands, then I get a couple of 15 or 25 foot XLR cables, hook them in here and I go out and up to the stands because they're a little bit taller on the speaker stands. So either way, I have that very conveniently done. But what I do to power the DDJ is I usually uh, take this cable and I run all of the access under here. So in this bag, my DMX controller is on top of a power strip mounted. So I usually just plug that in right there. And if I was on say a regular sized six foot table, then obviously I'm going to turn here and then I'm still gonna take this just a little bit more and plug it into the back accordingly on a six foot table. So that's how the DDJ gets its power. But for the sake of this video, I'm gonna get you guys a little bit of power over here and I'm gonna show you this is all it takes to power things on. Plug it in and turn on the power switch right there, very convenient. Another thing I like to keep in my DJ case is a paintbrush so this video is loaded with a couple of extra tips all I do here is just dust things off right here in Texas or usually in outside environments we get a little dust and this is a very fast way to clean everything and for the most part it may um, disturb faders but it usually and never really disturb any buttons right so faders are just sliding around all over the place as expected but I could certainly get a good dusting of my equipment because you want to look as neat as you can and get everything like you need to get it. Don't forget to reset your speeds. And uh, this is now out of sight, out of mind. So that's pretty much the gist of how I set up my DJ case. Obviously, I would have to open up the laptop, start up Serato, which is uh, not a big deal. 
And I also put out a video that shows um, Serato does work with Big Sur. So you guys can check that out too. I'll just put like a few links down below to show you what they are. So one, Serato does work with Big Sur. How I built that DMX controller slash power strip case thingy. And um, I think I owe you a Moss Black Pack video to show you how I put stuff in there and how I rock with it. But other than that, this is pretty much it for the DJ case and the setup. So one thing I'd like to share with you is how I use my channels right here. This is a four channel board and I mix in two deck mode in majority of the cases. So channels one and two are dedicated to two turntables on Serato. Channel three over here is dedicated to my mic and channel four is for the iPad. Everything is gain structured so that one, my mic is always above my music and two, uh, when I push any music source up, they are all even across the board, like two turntables matching with the iPad so it's not a shock factor if I have to push one or the other up at any given time. So now let's talk about how I break this system down, right? And it's really quite simple because one of the things I do first with the board is I make sure I turn all of the volumes down to include the master volume. Once that's satisfied, before I turn this off, I turn my speakers off, so I turn them down, off, unplug them, and then I come back to the DDJ and finish the breakdown. So here I can simply turn off the power switch, shut down here, and it's gonna ask me do I wanna save it. I usually say yes, and I shut that down. So while this process here is happening, I simply work on other stuff, like I don't need the hyperdrive plugged in anymore. So while Serato's taking its sweet time to shut down, by the time it does, I'm already uh, packing up the uh, hyperdrive here. So let's set it there for now. Here's my USB dongle here, and let's go ahead and remove the iPad. It looks like Serato has finished shutting down, right? So another thing I do then is uh, I come in here and I go ahead and shut down my computer. So while I hit the uh, shutdown right here, just close it. And all these windows are going to be closing and whatever, blah, blah, blah. So while that's happening, I'm continuing to work on other stuff like put my Velcro strip back here on my cables, right? Double check, save, hit enter. All right. And then over here, I'm just simply going to take this and disconnect the power. I've already disconnected the audio. And there it is. And again, I do store this with one antenna already hooked up. So just getting that set. Looks like the Mac is closed. Only thing left to do with the tray is just slide it forward. Disconnect my leads from any speakers or any speaker cable. Disconnect the power from wherever it's plugged in. And that goes conveniently stored right underneath there. Here's the front case cover. Just slides in just like that. So before I put the top case on, one of the things I wanna emphasize is before you put your top on, check to make sure nothing's hanging out. Like every now and then a wire may get out here like this. You pinch it off and next thing you know, you have to pay another 20 bucks for a cable or whatever they cost. Another thing I like to do is label my case because just by the nature of this carry handle being here, there's been plenty of times in the past that I have put that thing <laughs> facing towards me, open it up only to realize I'm looking at the back of the DDJ case. So I'm used to it now. I know how it goes, but sometimes people do help me and, you know, it works out. So all I need to do is put away my MacBook. There's my iPad, hyperdrive, USB dongle. And then of course, uh, this section of the bag is finished. So I'm zipping it all the way up. And then the front part of the bag is where I keep the microphone. So there's the laugh mic, there's the microphone and everything just goes in there really convenient. So there it is, party people. We just talked about how I set up my DJ case and break it down, plus what's in it. Here's the question of the day. What do you use, soft case or hard case? I'm curious to know. Now, if you guys got any questions or something you need to uh, give input about, leave it in the comment section below. And of course, don't forget to smash that like button. Help our channel by subscribing. And if you wanna keep up with these cool videos, all you gotta do is rock that bell. 
I'm Gerald with G5 Productions. And if you want to check us out on the web, you can always visit www.g5productions.com. Let's party.